Hi guys, this is Heather with Whippoorwill Woodland Creations and I'm going to show you how to make a pot holder today. Yay! I've got my pattern all ready to go and this is just an example. I tried to make a video last night. I tried twice and it didn't work. So, I picked out some more fabric. This is the back of it. Put your hands in it like this and it works really great. I've got two layers of batting. One is a cotton batting and one is called an Insulbrite. And I'll show you that when we get ready to do the other one. I've got a fusible web on the three pieces of the eyes and on the beak. And two sets of wings. So you'll cut one front, one back, four wings because we're going to have two pieces for each wing. And then two sets of eyes for each size and one beak. Okay, so I've gone ahead and sewn some of it already together for you. I left one eye so I can show you some techniques and I left the wing open. I didn't sew it down. You see how there is a, a mild slope and then there's a big slope here, big curve. That's the part you're going to leave open. So you're just going to sew a quarter inch seam all the way down the, the gentle slope. And then you'll turn it and press it. And I've already done that. And then you're just going to uh, place it on here so that it fits the side of the owl body. And I've got a couple pins here. We're just going to stay stitch this at an eighth of an inch so I don't have to pin it later. Okay, so now we're going to go around here, get a little closer. That should be good. I've got my um, open toe foot on for the decorative stitching. That's all right. I'm just going to. Uh, gauge it by that center line about an eighth of an inch just anywhere less than a quarter inch and you're good so we'll take this pin out um one second i gotta put it back on straight stitch okay here we go so i'm just sewing an eighth of an inch around I've also got the batting, the cotton batting, tacked down as well. So now I've got, oops, I dropped my scissors. Oh. So now I've got my top piece and my batting, and I've got my wings basted down. And now we're going to do the eye. I'm going to go in, I'm just using white thread, it's actually a gray. So you can see um, how to do that. I want to show you a technique that I use on inside corners and outside corners. But we're going to start on the, um, <coughs> the middle eye first. Now we'll go to zigzag. I'm going to change my stitch down to a three because that's what I used on the other eye. And my stitch length, that was the width. And my stitch length is a 1.2. We're gonna lock a stitch here. Well, that's gonna be a little too close. It's all right, we can adjust. There we go. So now you're going to try to keep up with that curve. Since this is a really small curve, you want to um, adjust. You want to shift your fabric like this. But since I'm like this, I want my needle in the outside edge because I'm on an outside curve. So I'm going to turn it, lift my foot, turn it, but my needle is down on the outside edge. I'm going to go a little more. And shift 
flipped it again. And if you have fusible web and it doesn't um, work too well for you, you can always use a little bit of a glue stick. Just make sure it's washable and just a very small amount. Again, my needle's on the outside position. Coming up to the corner here. Make a little shift. And I'm going to come to that point and I'm going to stop on the outside. There we go. Now, instead of coming like this, I'm going to go about a 45 degree angle, do one round of stitching, meaning I'm going to go to zig and then I'm going to zag. And now I'm going to do this angle here. And I'm going to go into the inside corner. And now I'm on the inside corner, so I need to have my uh, needle on the inside. And I'm going to do that 45 degree again. And I'm going to do two stitches here because of the width of that angle. Now I'm back to my straight stitching. Well, straight up. I'm on the outside because I'm on an outside corner. I'm going to do one round of zigging and zagging. And I'm going to clip that thread. Get in there. Kind of hard to see around the camera. So now we'll go finish up the eye here on the black. We'll lock the stitch. Put my needle up. Go to the next one. Do a locking stitch. And since this is a bigger circle, it might be easier for me to get all the way around without having to stop and adjust. We'll see. We'll see. I'm going to adjust. Here we go. You could do this in a satin stitch, which would mean you're just going to um, bring your stitch length down to maybe 0.8 or 0.4. I'm going to lock that. Bring my needle up, and we'll do the outside piece now. Lock it. Then we're just going to zoom around the outside. This is a bigger curve, so it's easier for me to handle. I'm just letting it guide, go where in there. I'm kind of just pulling it just a little bit, just to help that curve. And my right hand is just kind of just holding on so it doesn't get away from me and there the eyes done so let's turn this here so now I've got my top piece all ready to go now all I have to do is sandwich it so I've already got this I've got my ironing board fabric that's the backing and I've got my um, insole bright. And if you can see, I'm not sure if you can see or not. This one is kind of a dullish. Has a little bit of a sheen, but this one is more metal looking. So I'm going to say that this is the metallicized, uh, metalized side. And you want the metalized side down toward your baking dish or um up toward your pot if you're going to use this as a trivet because then that holds that pushes the heat back towards the the hot object so since we want this to touch the 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 hot object we want the metalized side to go down so i've already got some pins in place here and we need a place to open it so we can turn it so we're going to start here at the horns and I'm just going to give that a little pin. 
And that little pin. Pin it here. couple more pins here and I'm normally not a pinner but when I'm doing curves and stuff yeah I'm going to pin it's a safer bet okay so we're going to start here we're going to sew a quarter inch all the way around and then stop here so I'm going to change my presser foot a good shot. I'll change my presser foot to my quarter inch foot. <clears throat> Get all of that stuff in there. Pull my pin out. And do a little locking stitch. Now we're going to go a quarter inch up to the top of the horn. Uh, I think that's a quarter inch. Yep, quarter inch. Woohoo! So I'm going to grab my little nippers here and help guide. I don't ever sew over my pins. I've done it before. And uh, the needle broke. And it jammed the straight pin down into my uh, feed dogs, and I couldn't get it out. I, we used pliers. It was like, I don't know, an hour before I could finally get it out. So I just decided that I was never going to sew over a pin again. So we're just coming around. If you have a stiletto, you can use that. Um, I like these. These were just, uh, uh, I think I paid, oh, I don't know, four, between four and six bucks on Amazon. And I usually have two or three pieces in. But since I have these out to do that top trim, oh, I forgot to do the eye. We have to go trim those threads. We'll do it when we open it. And we can do a little back stitch and it's fine. And we'll cut the threads. Okay, now I'm going to get my little more sturdy nippers here. I'm going to cut off. I'm not going to cut into my seam, but I'm going to cut off some of this stuff. Just to... Um, Remove some of that bulk. These aren't really necessary. These, these nippers aren't really built for this, but it's what I got out. There we go. Okay. Now we get to turn it. We'll back up a little bit here. So you can see me struggle. <laughs> All right, now we're going to grab it where the the two fabrics meet. Your your ironing board fabric and your your um, top piece. I'm going to get my finger in that point there, kind of get it started. And we're going to start shoving. Get that through. Okay. 
go. Easy peasy, right? <laughs> okay, so now I've got this chopstick. I've got bone turners. They're just in the drawer. I like this thing because it's longer handled. And I'm poking out that horn because we want to have them have a nice horn or an ear, whatever you want to call it. Get this pushed out. Here we go. I like this color blue. I'm not really a blue person, but I like green. Green is my favorite color. So now we got the other ear here. Poke that up. So there. Now let's get that thread. We'll clip the threads. There it is. There. So done. Almost. Almost all done. give it a press after I get this pushed out just a little more okay now a quick press over here to my ironing board station it's just a little one that my husband built for me you should check it out on Facebook guys it is so cute I love it Okay, so now all you have to do is close up this opening right here. And I would just take some matching thread, um, probably the blue thread to match. Do a little whip stitch and it's all closed. And there you have it. A pot holder. Isn't that adorable? So I will put the link to the pattern on my Facebook page. And... Um, you can order that from there. And I hope you enjoyed watching. And thank you for joining me today. And we'll see you next time. Happy sewing.